It was a bright, sunny morning, and the Pacific Ocean was as calm and serene as always. One of the town's most influential researchers, Catherine Wilson, was ready to dive into the water in her metallic cage. She was a master in diving and was almost ready for her research expedition. She had to look for the coral reefs in the middle of the ocean and determine their impact on the sea inhabitants. On the 28th of July, 1965, Catherine fearlessly plunged into the water, defying the perception of her fragility. Despite her appearance, she proved far stronger and more resilient than anyone had imagined. Everything was going according to their expectations. Captain Jack was accompanying Catherine in this expedition. Both were fulfilling their temptations of diving in the middle of marine inhabitants when suddenly, the cage moved with a jerk. Initially, they thought it was simply because of the cruel water waves, but their prediction got wrong when they saw a shadow. To their astonishment, it revealed a magnificent creature with untamed jaws, defying any prior expectations. She had already encountered sharks in her 20 years of diving career, but this shark had something different in it. They were surrounded by metal protection, but the shark could have made any unpredictable move to hurt the divers. Catherine was playing safe and trying to take the cage from the shark's vicinity. Jack was helping her and taking care of the emergency control button simultaneously. As they descended into the darkness, their surroundings became barely visible. Using their waterproof torches, they scanned the area to see everything around them. The shark was angry and seemed aggressive, as if hungry for ages. Catherine wasn't taking it seriously as she had encountered sharks before. The only difference was its massive size, which was more than enough to terrify an ordinary person. The shark rushed towards the metallic bars and tried to get into the cage. The cage bars were close enough, making it difficult for the shark to get in. The giant creature struck the cage with all its force. The cage turned upside down with numerous jolts injuring Catherine and Jack. Both of them had lost their balance, but the cage had somehow managed to sustain the damage. The shark wasn't happy with this unfamiliar intrusion in its territory at all, and it was giving signs through its attacking nature. The crew was defensive because they couldn't attack the giant creature. Just when the shark attacked again, Catherine decided to escape the cage. She instructed Jack to inflate the life jackets and ensure they had enough oxygen to survive. Jack followed the commands and they opened the locks. Little did they know that their survival strategy was going to be miserable. When Catherine rushed to open the locks, the shark attacked again. This time it was a ten times heavier jolt that left Jack unconscious. Catherine lost control of her nerves. The cage constantly jerked and jolted after the attack, spinning in the darkness. The shark had almost entered the cage and had destroyed a few of the metallic bars because of which its mouth was inside the cage while the gigantic body was outside. All the shark needed to do now was to put in a bit of effort to get to the prey, who were only a few meters away. It was constantly applying force and getting closer to the two divers, trembling with fear. After minutes of constant effort, the shark had destroyed nearly all the metallic bars and entered the cage. Both had no chance to escape now, and death was obvious. They pressed the emergency control button and sent as many signals up there on the shore as possible, but none of the strategies could have saved them from a hungry beast. Catherine remembered her family and the fabulous days she had spent there. She thought about almost every memorable event of her life and the records she had made because these were probably her last moments in this world. The shark opened its mouth and ate Jack in front of Catherine. Catherine lost consciousness right there because she couldn't see her dearest friend dying before her. The water in the cage turned red for some time, but the redness stayed for a few moments because of the flowing water. Jack was in pain and affliction as he was crying, but his sound was inaudible in the depths of the water. The shark rushed forward and ate Catherine, who was already unconscious. Both the divers had gone to the world of imagination. They were no longer the inhabitants of planet Earth, and they belonged to an unknown place. The rescue team sent a cage after detecting the exact location of the place. They kept on looking for their divers, but couldn't find any signs. After hours of rescue operation, they found a destroyed cage with a shark circling it. There was no sign of humans at all. After roaming around in the water and using almost every strategy to find the lost divers, the rescue team returned to the surface declaring the two divers dead. The world mourned the death of such a famous marine enthusiast and her supporting staff. 
Cage divers decided to keep the metallic bars close enough for any shark to enter. They decided to get into the depths with all the necessary protective equipment. They had learned a lesson and were enthusiastic about continuing the legacy of their dead fellows, who had made history. Cage diving was not simply a sport, but a passion for Linda Thomas. She had gone on numerous water expeditions before, but this was different. She decided to go to the South African coast, which is famous for its magnificence and its frightening sharks. Linda Thomas learned about an 18 feet long shark in the ocean's depth. Thrilled by the idea of looking at the beast and the hefty amount offered by a travel agency, Linda decided to venture on this trip. She was determined to grab the hefty prize money for capturing some aesthetic pictures of the shark. On the 20th of May, 2018, as the metallic cage descended into the ocean depths, Linda felt an exhilarating rush as the cool water caressed her spine. The anticipation of what lay ahead added to the thrill of the underwater adventure. These were high-speed resisting waves constantly trying to descend the cage into the darker depths of the water body. But Linda perfectly knew her job. She was enjoying the mysterious underwater world and its inhabitants. When the cage reached a few meters down the surface, the diver saw some small sharks encircling the cage. Linda was stunned by these massive creatures around her. But she was desperate to see the 18 feet long creature. She was diving with all her might, but the shark was hidden in the magnificence of the sea. After hours of enduring the constant struggle and descending into the cage, Linda's heart skipped a beat when an ominous shadow loomed around them. An immense and elongated silhouette seemed to engulf the entire cage. Linda was excited but petrified at the same time. She hadn't seen such a huge beast before. She had heard stories of dinosaurs but hadn't even imagined them as huge as the great white shark she could see just in front of her. The majestic apex predator of the sea had teeth like daggers and swords that were already bloody red. Probably the shark had eaten its prey before and still had space for more flesh in its gigantic stomach. It was aggressive and exasperated too. Linda hurriedly took out the waterproof camera and took some pictures. She was quite happy about the accomplishment, but her happiness was about to change into misery. The shark suddenly opened its mouth and attacked the metallic bars. It seemed like a mythical creature from centuries ago was back with a class. The great shark had scales on its body that were all shimmering and glazing. The beast constantly encircled the cage, making it difficult for Linda to dive. She was stuck in the middle of the darkest sea and the strangest creature ever. The shark was again on the metallic bars, destroying the emergency control button and one of the cage's headlights. With the destruction of headlights, the leftover illumination turned into darkness, making it nearly impossible for Linda to see. She was exasperated, but she hit upon a plan. It was a do-or-die situation that could have taken her life, but there was no other option. Linda opened the locked cage, inflated her vest, and took her sonar system. She did this all within the blink of an eye because she was pretty much trained in this. The shark was still moving all around the cage with its muscular body, making it difficult for the cage to move. Linda deceived the shark and started swimming across the mighty ocean with all her power. She was succeeding in her plan and was constantly giving signals for rescue. Linda was optimistic about getting out of trouble safe and sound, but a twist awaited her. Just when she was a few meters from the cage, the shark bounced its tail toward Linda. Linda tried hard to maintain the equilibrium, but this hit was hard. She couldn't cope with the pain and lost consciousness. The shark moved near Linda and opened its mouth to grab the prey. Linda wanted to make one last effort before giving up so she tried to regain consciousness and fought the opposing waves. It was pretty difficult for the young diver to continue swimming at the pace of a shark with half of her neurons active. Linda was completely bruised, but her wounds were somehow decomposing with the brutal waves. She wanted to surrender, but the idea of leaving her family was the only thing that kept her consistent. Linda gave one last sonar signal. The rescue team caught the frequency and gave a counter signal. Linda felt a sigh of relief when the signal struck her eardrum. The rescue team was trying to locate her to send down another diver in the water. The only problematic thing for Linda was the furious shark just behind her. She could easily survive the expedition if she managed to escape the shark. Despite attempting various techniques to deceive the shark, it persistently followed her. 
When all hope had vanished and Linda was about to surrender, she saw a cage descending. The diver inside held Linda's hand and pulled her inside the cage. Linda's oxygen saturation was very minimal and she was panting. The shark was again on the metallic bars, destroying the emergency control button and one of the cage's headlights. With utmost care, the rescuer swiftly changed Linda's oxygen mask, allowing her to take a normal human breath. As they ascended toward the surface, Linda felt a tinge of sadness, knowing she had lost her camera in the water, which held precious pictures of the giant creature. Nevertheless, the rescuer's presence served as evidence of their extraordinary encounter. He had seen Linda encountering the beast with utmost bravery. Linda got preliminary aid as she was severely injured. Her wounds healed with time, but she had made history. She was the first woman to see this wild, majestic creature and was admired across the globe for her expedition. She was a lady to be remembered forever, at least amongst the research community. The ocean was a vast expanse of magnificence as far as the human eye could see. The Great Atlantic appeared peaceful, and there were no signs of a whole wonder world waiting inside. Mr. John Smith was ready to go on his routine cage diving expedition. He was on a mission to observe the number of white sharks in the middle of the Atlantic. It was the last day of his mission, and he had almost determined an average of the apex predator ruling the ocean with an iron grip. George Brown accompanied John on this fabulous expedition. He was also an eager soul known for his daring exploits and fearlessness. Both of them dived down into the waters on the 27th of June, 2009. They were doing their job, observing the great white sharks in their habitat. Everything was going smoothly, and they explored the water frequented by great white sharks. Numerous sharks encircled them, but that was nothing to worry about as they were inside the cage and aware of the shark's nature. These small sharks were adding to the beauty of the environment, providing a chance to take some wonderful pictures for the research papers. Things were going smoothly and there was nothing to worry about. They were enjoying their journey and making memories. Little did they know that their expedition was about to turn into misery. Just when the cage lowered into the depth of the massive water body, an air of unease clung to the crew. John saw an 18-foot great white shark. He hadn't seen such a magnificent creature before and obviously got shivers down his spine. He shuddered for a moment but gathered back his control on the nerves. Shark didn't seem very aggressive and it was encircling the cage. The encounter was peaceful for around 10 minutes. Both George and John were fascinated to see the graceful shark. It was amazingly large with a muscular body. It was nearly the size of a big car and all its moves were worth watching. John was observing the shark and taking aesthetic pictures using his waterproof camera. George was motivating his partner and closely observing the giant creature at the same time. The giant was opening and closing its gigantic mouth, probably in agitation. They didn't know the reason, but it provided a fascinating sight. When they were about to dive out, the shark's behavior changed into something peculiar. A hidden agitation could be seen through its body, and its erratic attitude increased with every passing second. Both the divers rushed to the cage's emergency control center. They wanted to inform their fellows on the surface about the underlying problem but neither did they get enough time nor the opportunity. The giant white creature lunged at the cage with stupendous force. Both the divers trembled at the attack, and their hearts started pounding ten times faster. The shark opened its large mouth in an attempt to eat its prey, who were already very scared of its existence. Both the divers somehow managed to regain their intelligence and tried to take the cage out of the shark's reach. It was difficult, and they had to exert all the leftover force in their bodies. They were struggling to take things in their favor, but the water disturbance due to their moves agitated the shark. It was now in an extremely frenzied state and ready to attack. The shark opened its gigantic mouth and forcefully attacked the cage using its knife-like teeth. The cage turned upside down with a jolt, making George lose his consciousness. This frightening jolt of the cage plummeted down to the ocean floor. They were in the middle of complete dancing with death whirling in front of them. The shark wasn't there anymore, but they were in a place that was nothing less than a death cell. Pessimism had surrounded John from nowhere, and looking at his unconscious fellow with very little oxygen left in the cage worried him. John was using the cage's headlight to monitor any further shark encounters. 
He was still trying to signal the emergency control for help, but all in vain. John was struggling to save his life and the life of his injured fellow. George was vomiting water even in an unconscious state, and the blood dripping through his body was nearly invisible in the water. John mustered up his courage and used his training techniques to save his life. He grabbed the buoyant vest and inflated it. The cage stopped descending, but the problem wasn't over yet, as the two divers were still trapped inside the metallic cage. As John continued struggling, he suddenly heard a sonar signal. His exasperation changed into a ray of hope. He hand-signaled the sonar to make the rescue team aware of human existence. Darkness started to fade when John felt the cage ascending upwards. He was applying all his force and diving techniques to support their ascend. John used his feet to prevent the cage from getting stuck in bushes and rocks. He was gasping, but his morale was high, and he couldn't afford another shackle to their way. After two hours of constant struggle and facing never-ending atrocities, John felt a reflected beam of the sun on his frozen body. They were on the surface of the water. The rescue team pulled the cage up on the ship. Both the divers were given first aid that relieved their pain. During this trip, John gained a wealth of new strategies and insights. He learned the art of resilience and how to navigate underwater challenges. Beyond being a research expedition, it became a valuable learning experience for all research analysts.